So we solved systems of linear equations. And again, systems mean just two more equations. Linear means they're both going to be lines, right? That's just a fancy way of saying it. So we solved them both graphically. Oops. Um, we used the calculator to do it graphically right here. right? And I did it with these models, but of course it didn't have to be models. You could have done it graphically with the calculator with these ones, right? And then I also used my by hand graphing right there by hand graphing right there and then I also did it numerically tables right so we want to be able to do both graphs and tables but graphs and tables are really limited you're limited to having things beyond the screen of, of the graph of course you got to sit there and adjust your graphs and stuff like that and you you'd have to get these into y equals mx plus b form which can be kind of a pain so if we don't want to do it that way now there's got to be a way that will work no matter what, and that is what the algebraic method is going to do for us. Now we're going to do two methods here. We're going to learn first the substitution method. Right? We're going to use substitution to solve a linear system, and then we're going to learn another method called elimination. Now substitution is really useful when you have one of your variables kind of sitting there and is a little lonesome. See that? See that plain x right there? That means it would be really easy for me to solve this equation for x. So if I add 4y to one side, go over here, and I can add 4y to the other side, that gives me x equals 4y plus 4. Now you're thinking, Alana, how in the world did that help us at all? It doesn't seem to make things easier. Ah, but it does. Okay, so this was step one right here. Oopsie. Step one, not step A. Right, we isolated a variable. See that? Isolated variable. There, I thought that would make that a little easier to understand. Okay, step two. We substitute the expression for the variable found in step one into the other equation. Okay, so it seems hard, but it's not hard. So you found that x was equal to 4y plus 4, right? See right there? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take that and you're going to plug it in to the other equation. Now the other equation that we had was negative five oops, negative five x plus three y equals fourteen. Okay? So instead of writing the letter x, see that right there? I'm gonna write negative five parentheses four y plus four plus three y equals fourteen. So you solved in step one x equals four y plus four. And then what you do in the step two is to lose your x and put in 4y plus 4 instead, what you said x was equal to. All right, done with that. Step 2, we substituted. Okay. Now we got to solve, in step 3, we have to solve that equation that we just found. So we take the equation we found, and we're going to solve it for the variable that's left, which in this case would be y. Now notice when you're done substituting, there should be only one variable left, because you only have one equation. So let's see, it's negative 20y plus, oopsie, minus, minus 20 plus 3y equals 14, right? Now let's combine some like terms here. We need to get, uh, let's see, the 3y and the 20y together. Let's make them grow, make it negative 17y minus 20 equals 14. Okay, now we're going to subtract 20 from both sides, or excuse me, add 20. What am I thinking? It's already minus, right? So we're going to add 20 to both sides. And of course, you do it to the left, you got to do it to the right. There we go. So you're going to get negative 17y equals 34. Okay, now you divide both sides by 17. Oops. Negative 17 make the negative part go away as well as the 17 part. So you're going to get y is equal to negative 2 because 17 goes into 34 twice. All right, so there you go. You're done with step 3. You're not done with the whole thing, but you're done with step 3. You found that y was equal to negative 2. But you're not finished. Remember what you're doing. You're finding the point where these two lines intersect, right? Well, two lines intersect at a point, x comma y. You only have the y part right here. So now we need the x part. Oops, I'm sorry. Just making that simpler. Okay. All right, so step four, we need to find our x. 
And the way you do that is you take one of your equations, either one, although honestly the one you found for step one is the simplest one. So if I take this one right here. But you could put it into either um, equation. Actually, I suppose it would be best, be most accurate to put it into one of the ones we started with. Okay, so if I take x minus 4y equals 4, x minus 4y equals 4, but instead of putting in the y, I'm going to put in negative 2, because I know now that y is negative 2. So that means x plus 8 equals 4, then I subtract 8 from both sides, and that gives me x equals negative 4. And now we're better. Now we know that the actual answer, which is what we were looking for, is negative 4, comma, negative 2. That's the solution. Right. So to reiterate, let's see what we did. Step one, we solved one of the equations for one of the variables. The easiest way to do that is to solve for any variables that have a coefficient of 1 call them naked variables, right, because it looks like they have nothing in front of them, right, and that, in this case was the x, so I solved it for x, then I took that x and I plugged it into the other equation, so I used the top equation to solve for x, so then I plugged it into the bottom equation, where there was an x, I put that solution that I found, right, then I distributed, solved, and all that good stuff, then I took that number and I plugged it back in and found the other one, substituted back in for y. Now keep in mind, they will not always work out to be beautiful whole numbers like this. Um, if they work out to be fractions, then you're going to be working with fractions or decimals. All right, let's move to the other method. So that was substitution. Then there's also the elimination method, which I particularly enjoy. All right, so elimination method has it so that you are um, solving the system by multiplying. Now, the trick is here that you don't really want this to be like it is, right? So I put in a fraction one here just to, to mess with you because we don't really like fractions. So our step one is we're going to be multiplying both sides of the equation by numbers to make it so that everything disappears. I'm actually going to go a step further and make it so that the fractions all disappear. So let me copy and paste this in here. Eliminate all that. Okay. So I'm going to tape my equations. I'm going to start by multiplying. Okay. I'm going to multiply that top equation by 6 because we don't like the fractions like that, right? So I'm going to multiply everything on the top equation by 6. There we go. All right, so that's that. All right, now how's that going to work? Well, it's going to do a couple things. We're going to make it so that that top number, um, let's see, okay, let me get you to see it. Um, 3 goes into 6 two times, right? So that top equation is going to turn into 2x minus Okay, now 2 goes into 6, because all of them get multiplied by 6. I mean, if you want to, you could write 6 over 1 times each one of these. Right? You could say, oh, you know, okay, it's 6 over 1 times this, it's 6 over 1 times this, and it's 6 over 1 times this, because that's what you're really doing. Right? But it just takes up a lot of space. So 2 goes into 6 3 times, so it's minus 3y. It's got to do all of them by 6. And then the last one, 6 goes into 6 one time. So we're left with 1 times 5, which is just 5. So it's equals 5. you got to do all of them. All three of them have to get multiplied by 6. Okay. All right. Then for the next one, we didn't do anything to it. So I'm just going to leave it like it is. 4x minus 7y equals 11. Okay. All right. Now, well, <sighs> when I look at what I've got there, 2x minus 3y equals 5, 4x minus 7y equals 11, this is where we need to multiply. And what we're going to do, let's read this. You want to multiply both sides of the equation by a number to get it so the coefficients of one variable to be equal in absolute value and opposite in sign. 
What do I mean by that? Well, okay, if this one's 4 right here, I need this to be negative 4. If this one's, um, let's see, so that was the easiest one to do, actually, is to multiply this top equation by uh, negative 2. So if we multiply by negative 2, that will work for us, right? Okay, negative 2, right? Now, why would you do that? Well, because that's going to turn it into negative 4x plus 6y because, oops, 6y, because you got to multiply everything by negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 makes negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 2 makes positive 6 equals negative 10 because that has to get multiplied by negative 2 as well. And then I'll just leave the bottom equation like it is. So it'll be minus 4x, oh, pass me, plus 4x, plus 4x, minus 7y equals 11. Okay, now why did I do it this way? Well, why did I multiply by negative 2? Like where did the negative 2 come from? Well, it, it didn't have to be negative 2. All you're trying to do is make it so that one variable and the other variable match up like this. That's your whole goal. right? You want the two variables to match. Right? That way if you do, when you add them up, they'll be eliminated. You see? So that's your reasoning. Now, could you have done it another way? Sure. You could have multiplied the top equation by 7 and the bottom equation by negative 3. That would get you positive, negative 21 and positive 21. Right? You're trying to make it so that the two coefficients for either the x or the y are the same number but opposite sign. Right? And again, I'll say it, I said it before, I'll say it again. This was not the only way you could have done this. You could have done 4 here and 2 here. That would have made 8. And, oh, excuse me, you've got to do positive 4 and a negative 2. Would that make 8 and negative 8? Or you could make it negative 2, nothing. Right? That's the easiest way to go. That's why I went that way. Um, or I could have done negative 7 up here. That makes 21. Positive 3 down here. That makes negative 21. Right, that would have worked. So whatever it takes to make it so that the two numbers are the same but opposite sign. That's your goal according to step one right here. Multiply by whatever it takes to make it so that they're equal in value but opposite in sign. Then you're going to add your left and right sides of your equations to eliminate one of your variables. So hold on. Poof. Okay, that means I'm going to take my two equations that I've got now. One has a positive 4, one has a negative 4, and I'm going to add them up. When you take negative 4x plus positive 4x, it's gone, right? And it leaves you negative 1y equals positive 1, right? Because 6 take away 7 is negative 1, negative 10 plus 11 is positive 1. You just want to solve this for y. So you want to divide both sides by negative 1. Negative 1 here, then you're going to have to do negative 1 over here. So you're going to be left with y is equal to, alright, you should see this. Hold on. There we go. Now what's 1 over negative 1? Well, hopefully you learned in school somewhere along the way that, that means it's negative 1. So your y value is negative 1. Beautiful. Oops, that was actually two steps in one. Hold on, real quick. All right, so that was negative 1, y equals 1. Then we solved that, and we got negative 1. Right, so we eliminated one of our variables. That's step 2. And then we solve for what's left. That's step 3. And then for step 4, you're just going to take the value of negative 1 that you found and substitute it back in one of the original equations. And obviously, in this case, you're going to put it in the bottom one. So you're going to go, okay, 4x, my, I mean, unless you really love fractions, minus 7y equals 11. So that's 4x minus 7 times negative 1 equals 11. 4x plus 7 equals 11. So subtract 7 from both sides. you'll get 4x equals 4, and then you'll divide by 4, which will lead you to x equals 1. So your solution is 1, negative 1, like that. And that's step 4, and that's the end. So we multiplied to make the same number but different sign. We added them up, we solved for what was left, then we substituted and found the other variable. All done.